Well, Rania, as many people know, and who watch us on a regular basis, you are based in Beirut, Lebanon. Obviously, there is quite a bit of news coming out of Lebanon today, as screaming headlines all around the world. The New York Times called it the worst sectarian violence in years. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, let me not editorialize. Let me just ask you, what is the situation that took place in Lebanon and where do things stand now? All right, so I will editorialize a little bit, but first I'll just break down what happened today. Uh, this morning in Beirut, there was a protest that was announced yesterday that was held by uh, members of Hezbollah, uh, their affiliated political party, ML, and actually a Christian political party called Marada, though they haven't been really talked about in all this. Um, but they held a protest today outside of the residence of a judge called Dodik Batar, who is overseeing the, pay, the Beirut port blast investigation. And they're very upset with him because they feel that he's politicized the investigation uh, by basically what they feel is going after people who are affiliated, affiliated with them and only them and leaving their uh, political opponents largely untouched in terms of people being interrogated and in an attempt to prosecute it for the Beirut port blast. And that's a whole nother issue that like deserves its own conversation. But regardless, they staged a protest this morning as is their right to do. It was an unarmed protest. It was announced yesterday. Uh, and I actually spoke to some sources within the military and from what I understand, Yesterday, Lebanese Forces, which is a right-wing Christian sectarian party that some people might know of because they actually are the party that collaborated with the Israelis during the Lebanese invasion of Lebanon and throughout the Lebanese Civil War and actually perpetrated the massacre uh, of Palestinians at Sabra and Shatila refugee camps uh, in the 80s. Uh, so they're a pretty, one of the most, I would say, vicious and violent parties during the Lebanese Civil War. Um, and they are, of course, huge opponents of Hezbollah. They are funded by the Saudis, pretty openly funded by the Saudis. They are backed heavily by the United States of America. And so they are basically an arm of imperialism inside Lebanon. And yesterday, they, or at least a faction of them, appear to have prepared for this Hezbollah-led protest in advance uh, in terms of launching an armed attack. And the military intelligence was aware that something was going to take place. So they actually had people on the ground prepared to try to mitigate the violence that they expected to happen this morning. But even they were surprised by what took place. Essentially, Lebanese forces gunmen opened fire in broad daylight on unarmed protesters. And they, they, they killed and injured several people. They killed up to, I believe, six people at this point and they injured dozens more. Um, and within 10 minutes of them opening fire from rooftops with sniper rifles uh, against, again, unarmed people, and people are trying to rewrite the narrative, but we have images and photos and video to prove this. Within about 10 minutes of that, people from the surrounding Shia neighborhoods, basically for, who, are, who are members of Hezbollah and ML, the movement aligned with Hezbollah, their armed wings came out heavily armed and basically tried to fire back at the shooters. Mm -hmm. And this gun battle went on at essentially what is a former front line of the Lebanese civil war between these, these two sides for several hours. And all this time, military intelligence was on the ground, kind of in the middle of trying to negotiate uh, de-escalation, and they were ultimately successful in doing so. And they averted what could have spread into a larger neighborhood battle and possibly a civil war. So I want to be clear here. The Lebanese Forces Party, which is a right-wing fascist party backed by the Saudis in the U.S., attempted to ignite a civil war in Lebanon this morning. They killed several people affiliated with Hezbollah and ML um, who were protesters. And that is what happened. The story you are seeing in the mainstream media is trying to completely whitewash this and also trying to almost blame Hezbollah for daring to even stage a protest in the first place. So I really encourage people to try to read, be, read between the lines when they see the way the New York Times and the Washington Post and other journalists on Twitter may be trying to throw their bias into here. And I include in that, you know, that sort of critical thinking call, I include also journal, like Lebanese journalists because Lebanese journalists, Lebanese media is also coming at this from very different bias perspective. Mm -hmm. They're all affiliated with different political parties themselves. Um, so again, like when it comes to the situation of what's going on in Lebanon, it's easy to be confused. But what happened this morning was so explicit. Fascists shot at the party that America hates in Lebanon. 
and you are seeing a, an attempt by the international media and international think tankers to try to blame the victim. Well, I really appreciate that that framing, and I think that's very important, especially given the you know what we're seeing, as you pointed out, in the mainstream media. I mean, I guess one question I have, Rania, is you know putting this in the context of some of the things you've talked to us about before: the fuel crisis, the issue of sanctions, and other pieces. I mean. What, what's the future for Lebanon? I mean, it really does feel the level of just the the pressure valve is is at the highest possible point here. I mean, it does feel like the pot is really boiling over on a lot of these contradictions. It, it really is. I mean, it's a very tense situation because of the economic collapse taking place in the country, which is not isolated, by the way, from the sort of U.S. and from U.S. empire's war on any resistance in the region. Um, and that's another problem with Lebanon is. You know, the country is so polarized right now between those who support resistance, those who are basically pro-American imperialism, and then there are people who are kind of a little bit confused, the sort of like more liberal types, maybe even more progressive types, who have, I think in the past few years, been really taken in by a dangerous discourse promoted by Western-funded NGOs that blames the country's problems entirely on corruption and internal deficits. And yes, Lebanon does have a lot of corruption. So do so does America. Right. I mean, frankly, so does Europe. So does every country in the world has serious corruption problems. Uh, also other countries in the region that don't have the same problems Lebanon has. So there is a real problem in Lebanon with people failing to understand the external factors that are contributing to this current economic crisis. I did an excellent interview with a good friend and, and, and journalist that I know here, Jamal Ghassan, about the economic collapse in Lebanon. Um, I also just wanna note, this is this is relatively new news that I'm getting, and I'm not sure the exact details of it, but apparently there have been retaliations in Baalbek, uh, which is an area of Lebanon against uh, Lebanese forces. Um, so I'm not sure what the details of that are, but, um, and clashes might be happening back and forth. Again, Not I'm not sure about the details, but this is what was so dangerous about this escalation that took place this morning, is it really opened the floodgates to a potential sectarian conflict. Um, and Lebanon is always on the brink of sectarian war. It has a intentionally weak state that was put together by Western powers to keep the country weak and controllable. And so, and there's so many external actors, the Saudis, the Americans, the Americans are slightly less involved, that are always trying to light a match because you can light a match in Lebanon any time. There's so many parties that are controlled by outside actors. Uh, of course, everyone will say Hezbollah is controlled by Iran. I, I would argue that it's not controlled by Iran. It just happens to be partnered with Iran. But, you know, in this situation, people are angry at Hezbollah for, for firing back. But, you know, my answer to that is what are they supposed to do when mm. they're shot at? And they're I mean, unarmed. It, that's a good question. I, mean, <laughs> I just don't understand. Yeah, well, I mean, it's one of those sort of enemy politics kind of things where no matter what they do or no matter how they do it, it's, you know, I mean, when they brought the fuel to the country, it was people were just like, oh, how dare they keep the lights on at hospitals? You know what I mean? Uh, it's just people will find anything. I mean, we see a similar situation in Palestine, of course, too. You know, I mean, with this, this uh, the author... Uh, Sally Rooney and the BDS issue, and it's just like, okay, well, if they do armed struggle, then they're terrorists. If they do BDS, then they're yeah. anti-Semitic. I mean, so it's just like, you, you can't win for you losing know, once you've been deemed an enemy, an official enemy by the West. I'll, I'll add one last thing just to top this off. You're absolutely right, and I'm glad you mentioned Palestine because a lot of people that will say about Palestine, you know, they'll note the, the Western media coverage is completely biased and that everything's always blamed on Palestinians. They're never allowed to fight back. And there is a similar dynamic when it comes to Lebanon, but a lot of the same people who can understand that with Palestine, when it comes to Lebanon, all that goes out the window, all of it, including the sort, you know, the sort of like today, uh, a person who's a researcher for Human Rights Watch was, was essentially trying to blame Hezbollah getting shot at Hezbollah mm. met protesters getting shot at on Hezbollah. Wow. Like that was the narrative being promoted by, I mean, I guess we shouldn't be surprised. It's human rights watch, but, yeah, but I still. mean, some of the same people will sort of understand this is problematic when it comes to Palestine, but then when it comes to Lebanon, it's a totally different ball game. And it's really unfortunate because a lot of the same players are, you know, sabotaging and they're, and they're infiltrating and they're intervening. A lot of the same sort of imperialist meddling that you see when it comes to Palestine happens in Lebanon as well. It's just 
you know, different names. Uh, yeah. And I really wish people could go back to understanding it that way. 